In this video, I'll be taking a base PCB I designed myself and had made professionally and soldering some surface mount connectors to it. I'll be assembling a wooden frame I made myself from ash using a router to form the dovetail joints. Building four shift register boards that sit on the underside of the base PCB. And create some anode link wires that also go towards making the cube more stable. And that we ultimately end up with a cube that looks like this. Starting off with the shift register boards, I need one of these to help assemble the surface mount connectors onto the base PCB. I designed them myself and had them made professionally. I need four of them in total and each one will drive two 8x8 panels. First components to go on are the decoupling capacitors followed by the current limiting resistors. I'm using TLC5916N shift registers. These are specifically designed for driving common anode LEDs and each of the eight outputs is governed by a single constant current limiting resistor. These are 1K and will limit each of the eight outputs to 20 milliamps. Each shift register will drive only one colour, so there are two red, two green and two blue shift registers on each board. Last to go on the board are the connectors. The three white connectors on the end are for power and signal in and out, and the black 8-pin female headers on the underside, which I forgot to record the installation of, are for connecting to the base PCB. I wanted the top surface of my base PCB to be as clear of clutter and solder joints as possible, so I decided to use surface mount connectors on the underside. As you can see, I used a long strip of female header to align the three 8-pin male headers. This is so that I can keep them in an absolute straight line when placed on the circuit board. I decided to place the first row of headers on the centre of the board and then work outwards. And this is to try and eliminate as many alignment errors as possible from one side of the board to the other. I then used my spare shift register board to place the remaining headers on a perfect 1-inch spacing. Using surface mount headers is a bit of a compromise. And this is because the solder joint for a surface mount header doesn't provide the same mechanical strength as the plated through hole equivalent. I proved this by soldering on a surface mount connector onto a spare circuit board then I applied some force and there was no surprise when a few tracks were ripped up. The surface mount connectors were also very difficult to solder. It seemed quite difficult to get the solder to flow between the terminal and the pad. I also had to revisit some of the joints because they weren't successful the first time around and to make sure all the joints were perfect it did take quite a bit of perseverance. Next up are the anode connections. I had decided originally to use spade connectors but I didn't like them much so I chose to use screw terminals instead. I took some standard terminal block, stripped away the plastic housing, cut the terminal from inside in half and then soldered on each half terminal onto an anode pad. I used a few lengths of tin copper wire twisted together threaded through the terminals as a guide to keep them straight and in place while I soldered them. This next section shows the assembly of the ash base. I created this using my router and a dovetailing jig. You'll see that the board that's being inserted is actually the one with the spade connectors on. I later changed these to the screw terminals. What's being shown here is actually a dry fit. I actually later on glued all this together and clamped it and left it for a few hours while it dried. Once glued there's actually no going back other than to remake all the parts. In case you wanted to know, the base is made from 1 inch by 2 inch ash. The next step was to do a dry fit of the shift register boards just to make sure all the clearances were OK. And here is the finished base. In the next image you'll actually see I've used the screw terminal version of the base circuit board. You'll also notice there's a power wire and a switch been added. In this final part of the video I'm going to show you how I made the anode link wires. We take some 20 gauge tin copper wire and clamp one end in a vise and then cut to approximately 12 inches in length. Using an electric drill the wire is then straightened by twisting it. Using a piece of MDF skirting board with pins placed one inch apart, the wire is then kept taut while it's wrapped around each of the pins to form loops. The excess wire is then cut off and the newly formed anode link wire is carefully removed from the jig. The wire will actually be slightly curved and therefore need straightening with a pair of pliers. And 16 of these are required for this cube. Well that wraps up this video and in the next video I will show you the final cube assembly. So thanks for watching, until next time.